So guys, welcome to the second episode of Sim Racing Academy. We have another coaching today with Edson in the Clickenhouse hypercar around Bahrain. The race is just in a couple of days. He's had more practice. He has had more experience in the car, with the car, on the sim. Um, he will come back with feedback and we will just pick up where we stopped last time. Um, also, we will take on the progress that he's done in the meanwhile and then see how we proceed throughout the session today. So Edson, uh, thank you once again for working with us here. Um, so after the last session, what would you say were, do you have improved? What would you say has been the benefit after those days when you were doing, let's say the homework for today? And um, what is the key areas or is there some specific areas where you want to focus on today? Or is there, is it just like general overall, just like improving here, improving there, working on the details? Like what is the approach that we should take for today or what are we looking and working on today, um, especially? Mm, I want, I want to say it's mainly just a general overall improvement that I'm looking after. Um, in terms of benefits since the last session, uh, I think I am being, I think I'm a little bit better in taking turn one, two, three. Um, even if I take it wrongly, I know I took it wrongly. It's just a case of trying to fix it. Um, and the approach to the very slow left, left-hander, uh, I forgot the name. I forgot the... Nine and ten, yes. Yes, nine and ten. Yeah, I... I think I'm a little bit more consistent um, on that on that turn, um, but yes, I think overall it's still a bit. There's still much to improve, really. Maybe maybe last corner would be something to look at. Okay, okay. Well then, um, I will pick up again. Um, turn eleven, turn thirteen. You didn't mention those two, but I'm gonna have a closer look into those two as well. And we're going to have a look into the final turn and just overall the techniques. Uh, but once again, first of all, just head out on track. Show me your current progress. Show me your current, let's say, state of driving, state of technique. And then we're going to pick it on from there. Okay. Is that full fuel? Uh, it should be, I think. Oh, wait. I need to restart that session first. Sorry. Start the weekend. Otherwise, we don't have the we don't have the full hour, which, of course, is not what we're here for. OK, Um. Uh, what do you mean? Is that full fuel? You can I think the yes. default setter that we have here is not full fuel. I think it's only half the fuel. Yeah, I forgot. I can change that. Oh. I can get on track or you still you can get on track, yes. Okay. But be be aware there's a synchronizing going on. Okay, I should have stopped now. Well, my wheel was shaking violently. Yeah, so was mine. Yeah, okay, that's fixed now. That is a common thing when restarting those servers every now and then. Alright, so we are looking... ...for the performance here of Edson. Um, he has indicated already about turn one, two, and three. Um, we will pick up on those again. So once again, you just do five, six, seven, eight laps, um, either until I tell you to stop or until you say, okay, um, this is like as a standard as it is right now. Yep. Okay. Uh, one final question: Have you checked for the steering settings on that on them rigs there? 
Uh, no, I completely forgot about that. That is a huge improvement already from turn one, two, and three. For those of you that have seen the other um, session, I've now marked it for you in the top right corner of that stream or of this video. Um, for those of you that seen that video, that seen that coaching, you have seen right here a direct impact of last coachings on the racing line he takes through turn 1, 2 and 3, also into turn 8, at least on this lap. Turn 9 and 10, looks more fluid. You guys, if you've seen the other video, if you've seen the first episode, our first session in this car, on this track, and compared the current drive to the beginning drive on the other coaching session, you'll see a clear difference. And honestly, that is that is making me happy. On uh, from a, from a coaching point of view, because that shows the direct impact that the last session a couple of days back had. He's done more practice on it. He's done more fine tuning on the driving. He now may have different issues, as he mentioned already. Maybe final turn is one to look at. We will have a look into the final turn. But with a 1, 2, 3 that he just did in this particular lap, I'm extremely happy. Let's see whether he replicates. Remember I told him to go a bit wider and take a tight apex and stay on the very right. To open up the NT through 2. The technique or the kind of way that he approaches turn 2 is still the same. He has admittedly effed up the, the apex of turn 1. Which just send him too wide, but overall the technique, the approach, the, the the idea behind the racing line that I tried teaching him, that he understood straight. Same goes for turn 8. He's now keeping it a bit more tight, straightening the exit. It looks alright, it looks good. Didn't lose anything at all to his lap time before. At turn 9 and 10, we still need to work a little bit on the rhythm. Turn 11, he was too early at the apex. Let's see whether he's doing that again. Yeah, he's kind of... He's kind of late in the turn and then misses the apex regardless still. Turn 5 looks... Oh, that's not 5, that's 12. In 5th gear, that's what I wanted to say. That looked a lot more fluent. So we can surely do 44s. If it just keeps the laps together. Which is a huge improvement. I think the best that we've had was some uh, some 45 last time see he takes it tight and then pinches in for second he just need he even can straighten up second uh, corner a lot more that will even give him a bigger gain on the acceleration out of it in turn three
same. So where I see a clear improvement overall is apart from the mistake that he did in turn 12 now the amount of laps and the way the laps are coming out in terms of the lap time is much more consistent there is much less variance in there in those other laps that he did last week you know there was a variance between like 5 tenths 8 tenths up to a second at, at some points where he was like messing up multiple corners. Arguably now he's messing up this corner, then another corner. Now he got turn 11, fundamentally great compared to the lap before. To 10th straight. Um, however, in the time lap you also effed up this corner, which is now giving him another 2 tenths. So there is a little bit of a... Yeah. Of an uncertainty in what I just said. But... If you just look where he it was coming from, out of turn 10, half a second down on his PB, now almost beating it, just missing a 10th here. So it's just about getting those laps together and even more fine-tuning the consistency. He has the potential to perform really, really well across the entire lap. Like this turn 2, he can attack it a lot more. But I like the way he approached this turn 1, 2, and 3. And this is what he said. He's trying to fix it. That is, that is what he's working on. And you can see that he has worked on it. And he is proceeding with it. And now we try to fix a couple of other spots on the circuit. And then he will go straight into the 44s. I have no doubt about that. So for turn 9 and 10, you will see he is now very much on the inside here through 9. And then kind of leaving a bit too much space on the exit. Um, or better say on the entry into turn 10 on the outside. And I think there is some more lap time potential for him. This time, turn 11 was really, really, really good. I can only hope that he is able to finish this lap. Ah, yeah, the curb, the curb. I'll give him one more. Forty-five two. Brilliant. He's, he's getting at it. The tire degradation kicks in though, I'm afraid, but let's see. He's getting too early towards the turn 9 uh, curb there. Lately. 
that is everything that we need to fix regarding turn 9 and 10. Just take a little bit wider line on the approach and he'll be actually really, really good with it. So we will have a look onto the um, virtual personal best after this lap for sure. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to improve too much. Yep, that's fine. I was about to call it off anyway. So let's head back to pit road and I will turn on the virtual camera and share the screen. Yep, I can see your screen. So, I'm extremely it. happy with that. Extremely happy with that progress. I can't remember us doing a 44 last time. We and didn't. I think, and I think we only did like 45, 3, 2. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah. Kind of the same. So we did that at the end of the session, and now you do it rather in the warm-up session. What I actually like about the laps overall, admittedly, you were always kind of, I don't want to say fucking up, but you were kind of losing time in different areas on different laps. So mm -hmm. overall, you have a great consistency, 45-3, 45-2, 45-5. We erase that one, 45, 4, 45, 4. That is extremely consistent. The only sort of issue with that is you see the inconsistency in the sector. Sector one you're doing 31, 6, 31, 6, 0 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.4. Um, in the middle sector you do 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. We erase that one, and then in the middle in the final sector you do 2, 2, 1. Uh, zero three, so that is the areas that we need to work on a little, little bit. I think I I I see a awesome turn one two three approach. I quickly want to jump into turn f uh, into lap four of you. This one. What I really appreciate. You do exactly the same thing. Look here, you have been more to the inside in the other session. You've done a great job improving on that. And you stick it all the way to the right. And now the only thing that you need to adjust is at this point, you still steer into the right. Don't do it. Here you can already go slightly, ever so slightly to the left, trying to carry a bit more speed towards that apex. Because here you turn in a bit too late then causing your momentum to 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 break down but um apart from that i really really like how you take turn one two and three overall so for this session just keep this up compared to many other parts of the track this is really really good mm -hmm. um five six and seven that is just about rhythm when to turn and i think Statistically, you could try to carry a tad more speed through this turn 7 here. I think you're not maximizing out the track all the way to the outside um, at this stage. But that is also just minor stuff. Uh, we, don't need a, we don't need to look too deep into this one. Uh, turn 8. Here you improved a lot as well because you're really keeping it tight here on the exit. Um, sometimes you are waiting a little too long until applying the power, so it's really like you try to rotate the car still at this point. Rotation should be more or less finished here. Um, if you're not finished here, you keep persistent on throttle application until there, which is a little too late from my point of view, but that is something that comes with the rhythm. Something that we really have to work on a little bit is this turn 9 and 10. 
So you are consistently hitting this curve way too early. You see, like in turn one in the other session, you are way too far on the on the inside already. So you are touching or you're about to touch that inside curb way too early here. You touch it roughly here. Whereas you should rather touch it there with more like this of an angle. So at that point you are too early at this left hand corner, causing your braking zone to be left curved instead of straightened. If you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. So what would be a bit better if you you can also leave a little bit of space to the to the overall curb. So if you're like, okay, uh, you, you start your approach here, you do a sharp turn to the left and not even touch that curb, but leave it a little bit of space so that they have a straight braking line up until you approach this curb. Because this is where we come to the next point. And this lap, you do not do it too much. But most of the laps, I had the feeling that you are a bit more to the inside. On, on that corner approach, let me see. Ah, you, you, you hit it. It just looks like it from the cockpit view because I'm focusing so much on the apex. All that we need here for this turn is to create a little bit more feeling for a rhythm. So what I would say, instead of turning in here, turn in over here. Just do that a little later. Because then you will not approach the turn at this point, pointing that direction. But you will more point this direction already. So you will have more completed this turn 9 approach. Okay. That will help you take in turn 10 then. Other than that, I think turn 10 and uh, turn 9 and 10 <laughs> is good. Here... You did a couple of times the early approach into turn 11, then the last two or three laps have been, they have been really, really good. Like, compared to the laps before, not much to mourn. The only thing that you could really do is like, put the car half a meter more to the right. That's about it. But you hit that curb, you accelerate the car, you're making use of the track availability there. That's all great. Turn 11, 12. Uh, turn 12 was really good. I think you push in the car as much as, as you can while still feeling comfortable and so on. Um, turn 13 is a bit of a tricky one. You broke a couple of times here on the curb. Every time you start breaking about about here is like, oh yeah, this is good. He's doing it just exactly right. And then you you keep the car a little bit too straight for the moment. So here you're still heading towards the outside. Whereas, whereas I would be like, okay, this is like where you could start scrapping a little bit of speed and still turn or start turning the car. So what you're doing here is um, you're still very much on the rubbed line, which actually is good. But from the just from the approach, you you would need to be more to the outside and more parallel to the to the line outside here. So. You're not really parallel to it, but you're pointing a little bit towards it instead of going really parallel, already pointing towards the curb. So I would say try to put the car 10 degrees more to the right. And if you still have the car in the same position as it is, as where it is right now, you still want to rotate it at this point, already looking towards the curb. Could, what, what's happening here is you put a virtual apex, let's say, into this area. Uh, this is this is where your apex of the corner is, whereas you're still miles ahead from the from the apex. So here you can still go faster, coast into the turn up until this point, and then you can gradually hit the curb and accelerate out of the corner. Because here you can see you 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 are too slow at the apex then, having scrubbed off too much speed beforehand. And yet, at this point, you're, you're accelerating the car already, so you should be at the point of where the corner opens. But then, the apex is just still coming, and you still need that rotation. So at this point, you'll see it on the throttle application when I move the tape further. You need to be assistant and wait for it even more, even open the throttle a little bit more, or, or get off it, in order to really finish the rotation. Um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You, 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 
get what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> yes, yes. I do this not very good right now, but um, try to carry a bit more speed. Um, it's it's a real edgy approach. Like when when you look at it from the from the very top, you'll see that it is like a bit. Then you turn in a lot. Then you open it a bit. The car gets a bit loose, and then yeah, you're you're just making it towards the e exit. Uh, so that would be the opportunity to work on for turn 13 and turn 15 uh, or 14. I think most of the time you just simply break in a bit too late. It is a tricky corner. Um, I think, let me see where you start the braking. Yeah, where the rubber line is. Just try start the braking at the last of this red floor paintings here in the gravel. Mm -hmm. It's just that 10 meters early, more early, and if you're 10 meters more early at the, at the, um, you can, you can start turning then earlier. So I would go for that pylon. That's absolutely fine. The curb is flat at, at this stage, as you will be able to see. Yeah, the, the curb is relatively flat, so you can fix this. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can, you can really touch that a good time and you even see some real road on it so there is actual grip available on that curb just put really half the car on it and then um keep it in second gear wait until the car has finished its rotation that's absolutely fine you need to wait there a little bit actually um and then try to straighten the car as much as possible i like here at this stage you're already too far to the outside because you really might need to fight to bring that car around that last little kink so a, a good turn would be like to hit the curb here on the inside and not go wider than the inner inner part of the rubber so that you can gradually use the space on the exit to straight line the car as much as possible. Yeah. How you do it in the end then actually. Yeah, yeah so okay. that is what I can um what, what I see so far for the moment. You have any more questions? You want to go try for it again? Uh, again? yes. Yeah, I can. I can go. I can go for it for a try. Uh, any questions first, though? Um, or anything I I shall uh, point out again? Uh, no. I think I think that's good. So in terms of turn one, turn one, the approach is fine. It's now working on the exit of turn one, so turn two and three. Exactly. So what you should do on turn two is not go too much to the right anymore. Like you had still that you come still out of the right turn and before heading into the left turn, you still turn to the right. So that is obviously something uh, that we want to correct at this stage. Yes. Yeah. And then turn four, turn four, and turn four is okay-ish. So not too good, not not good, not bad. It's somewhere in the middle. Uh, mm, then you have five, six, seven, which is what you were saying a bit about rhythm. Sometimes it feels good. Sometimes I overshoot a little bit. So yes, it. Yeah. But in gen in general, I think with the with with I think with the set with the setup on on the race venue. Uh, the car, the car turns a little bit better, so it holds fourth, fourth gear better. Here, I think it sometimes wants to lean into third, which is something, yes, I, yeah, yeah. which is something yeah. I wasn't experiencing there. So that's one of the things that was frustrating me a little bit. Um, that's fine. Um, small tip: mm -hmm. if you scrub off enough speed here and keep the car like you, you calm off a little wide. If you are let's say 5 kph slower and have the car a little bit more to the right then you have it easier and can carry more speed through the left hand this might mm -hmm. be worthwhile testing for you yeah yeah then the next turn so that'll be turn seven i guess eight the hairpin turn eight yes turn eight. Uh, i think it's okay i think it's generally okay it's just a bit of a um trying to finish the turning a bit earlier Yes. Um, yeah. Overall, I think it's really good because in this turn, and you can, you can probably see it a bit from from the top. Let me go out a little bit real quick. 
So you see this is rather parallel to it. Um, and you see that the rubbered line, it has right where this where this middle apex curb is, that red part. There it has a little bit more angle towards the exit already. So that indicates that the apex is right in the middle of the corner. Mm -hmm. But from the angle, it's a bit, let's say, pointing towards the exit. And you do this really good at this stage because uh, you, you take the maximum available track here on the left. You go a little wider, which is fine. Then you scrub off the speed. You go a little slower. Then you turn in. And this is actually perfect. This is exactly where the car needs to be placed at. Um, so just keep this keep this going. And this is what I mean when I say you, you, you try to finish too much rotation. You're still very much turning. Like still 60% turning in there um start opening the steering here you can almost go like even 10 percent less and therefore can rely more on the acceleration out of the turn because here you don't even come towards the outside and but you lose the vital in this phase you lose the vital time from not getting down the power not getting down the traction because the time that you would make up from being able to push the car more here um, you might be still identical here on the exit, but from this point onwards with the other approach where you could power the car earlier and rely more on the traction and still taking the wider line on the exit, here you have an overspeed though. So you're not doing 228, but maybe 134, 135. And then you'd carry that advantage all the way down until you start braking for this turn 9, 10 complex. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in turn nine, ten, still need to work on. Um, a little bit. Yeah. I still think I've improved a little bit in terms of I don't spin as many times there, and but yeah, okay, I still need to work on it. Uh, try to turn in a little bit later so that I can break in a straighter line. I guess it's a bit of a um, get a bit scared that I won't have enough enough time yeah. because I've been braking and turning at the same time so obviously I have to brake for a longer time because the car won't stop. It's fine uh, but I, I, I get that even I get that feeling in any other car that we're doing racing around here so yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah. Uh, then I believe it's turn 11 so turn 11 is generally okay. It is a lot better than before, like you see, you take in the outside line, you even stay a little bit more on the outside, you take the apex good, you power the car through the turns. Um, turn 12 is good. I think you push it as much as you feel comfortable with it, which is everything I would ask for. Yeah. yeah. Turn 13, we spoke about that a little bit already. Yeah. And then it's just turn 14. For turn 14, I think the only thing I can advise you for the moment is break a bit earlier, break here already. Turn in a bit earlier, try to slightly touch that curb, and other than that, just see what the car is doing, and then we we'll go from there. Yeah, okay. I'll give it a try. Go for it. Uh, yeah, always good. All right, so we've done a couple of points discussed. This is obviously a little bit redundant to what we've already discussed in the last session, but this is absolutely normal because you've seen a huge steps, huge development in turn one, two, and three, where we literally just focus on that little detail that he is still turning to the right after exiting turn one. So that is the next thing he okay. needs to work on a little. I've been experiencing. A few, I don't know if you if you've been experiencing a few freezes, but I think I've been. This is the third time this session that I've had a freeze. I didn't see any freezes from my end. Yeah. Hmm. 
but yeah the track is uh, the track is rather heavy on the um, on the hardware times. The angle was right, it's just that you have been a bit far to the left. But the overall angle from where you turned in for turn 10 was good. corner a little more often. It's rather tricky to... I think it's only his his approach is a bit edgy. Other than that, the corner is fine. He just puts his apex that he's actually taken in turning a little bit later. He's actually going to be good with it. I'm very sure about that. Try to even go early on the power here out of turn 8. You certainly want to be off that curb when starting the approach for 13. Yeah, that's the first time I got track limits warning there. This is good. That caught me by surprise. Means actually, means actually that you go fast enough. <laughs> mm. Sounds a bit stupid, but if you go too slow and go off track, the track limits are not even triggered, so... Uh, okay. Try to skip that little wing to the right. Yeah. And just head straight for that apex. Yeah, I noticed that I did that. This could become a very good lap now. Power. Yeah, see what the Delta is doing? Yeah. That has been a really good turn 9, turn 10. Keep doing exactly that more often. That's exactly what you need. Much better. Now just repeat the last turn from last lap and you'll be golden. And power, yes. A little bit too assistant, but welcome to the 44s. Is there a way to save laps? So that I can review, look at it again? 
Got replays turned on, yes. Otherwise, we have it in this video, of course. Yeah, true. Oh, this is looking good now. Power. One hit wonder. <laughs> it, this turn 10 is so incredibly complex, so you really need to celebrate it when you get it just right. Because it's so easy, there's so many parameters, it's not like you hit the brakes here and you turn in. It's like you hit the brakes, you have to do turning, you have to find the limit of the tire and the brakes. And you have the approach angle to be a variable and so on. There are so many variables in the approach of this turn, it's just incredible. Way too early. Fine, we can go a little faster through the final turn. Yep. Let's just keep trying. That was too late. Almost brilliant. But at least no turn to the right. Exactly. We were a bit too fast in turn 1, but overall the approach for turn 2 was great. Was a good turn 10, too late on the throttle, but overall good approach. Hmm. They want to try a click more traction control, maybe. Uh Oh, I was supposed to be in five. Okay. That's a bit of focus there. That's fine. Turn 2 approach was good again.
Uh, so you can push it a bit harder into the final turn for yeah, sure. Yeah, I broke a bit too early. <laughs> yes. That was too late. That was too late though. I think you shredded your rear tires already a bit from the big slide in the beginning of the stint. Yeah. Good exit out of 13. Now you just need to take a little bit more speed into the turn and you'll be good. Same with the final turn. I think you're slowing down a bit too much now. Yeah, I think I hesitated when I was at the apex. Yeah. Yes, yes. Wait oh my god. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, at least it's reassuring to know that it's there somewhere just in a bit more practice oh yes like you got honestly you got a potential for mid 44s low 44s maybe for sure yeah, yeah. If you want to, I can I, I can do two or three laps in a row to, to, to give you a reference. Uh, yes, please. That would be good. Okay. Um, I'm pitting this. Um, I just want to take the last corner again. Need to relook at what you said about that corner. Hmm. Still not. <clears throat> okay, so you have full fuel. And on board TC5. Yeah. Yes. And medium tire. Uh, okay. Soft. Steering uh. settings. Need to quickly <laughs> change them to more justify the car. Okay. Are you sharing your screen or? Okay, never mind. Um, I'm still just. No, not yet. I can share it. Oh. Uh. Yes, please. I think you'll be good. You see it? One second. Yes, I see it.
The more gentle you'll be able to turn in, the less violent the rear will obviously snap around. So I'm trying to focus a little bit on that one as well. Because this is the biggest difference right now between you and me. Um, I'm probably just turning in more softly and not as... Mm -hmm. as I, I, I already mentioned it violently last time. Mm -hmm. um, due to your steering settings. I think this is the only difference and this is the reason why my car might be bent in a little less around than yours at, the, at, at this stage. To just see a bit. <laughs> oh yes. I find that hilarious. It's a bit ridiculous. Indeed. So you see I'm carrying a bit more speed into the turn, hence then uh, coming out a bit wider on the exit. Mm -hmm. For this turn... Break, break up into the apex. So let's see what I can do in the uh, in the cold status. So I'll just try to genuinely make it through the turn two. Make use of all the track available there for you. bit too fast. A bit too wide. You see most of the time before the actual apex I'm back on the throttle already again. I think this is the major difference between us uh, at this stage. Yes, I've notoriously been bad at in slow corners always been bad but that's what we're obviously working on so yeah don't worry so stay a bit wide here and then as soon as the turn comes you carry a bit more speed third gear actually feels fine for me there yeah I yeah I, I want to do it in third but I am I know that I'm doing something wrong there it doesn't allow me to I do think third. I Again, the um, if you look at my steering inputs compared to your steering inputs, you'll see that my steering wheel is moving a lot slower and a lot less. And that's simply because from my um, from my steering settings, I assume. Well, that was a nice drift, obviously. Now you can almost straight line turn too easily there. Then I can carry more speed through that left king. Mm -hmm. Again, slightly a bit too wide there. Oh, damn it. So, I came too close to that curb now. Mm -hmm. But you see, I've, I've taken out a too wide line into turn 9. Unsettling the car with a quick left left steering to try to get a straight approach to turn 10 but it was too um, too violent mm. and this is what where the car is really sensitive when you put the car into a gentle turn you can really carry a lot of speed and a lot of throttle through these corners but you really need to have that rear of the car set it down yeah and this is where you can make a difference with the steering settings, as I mentioned. However, of course, if the sim center there um, is having the settings that you have, then you're kind of 
I don't know, like either you start turning less and more gently on the steering wheel as such, but you can't just like do that within a day or two. Yes. That is like a really long process. Mm -hmm. So I do my final lap. I think I have the brake wires a bit too far to the to the rear now. And that's a track limit. So I put it a bit further to the front again. Don't break in the middle of the corner. So this is what happens if you just unsettle the rear. When you're just overdriving it, the car really loses a lot of performance. But what you want to do is like just be gentle here. Try to approach the turn in a straight way. Wait for the apex to come. Don't run wide. Yeah, talking, talking and driving, explaining and driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not smart. Yeah. I get that. Good to see it's not just me. Yeah. To be fair, it's um, I think when when you see Jimmy Broadbent doing, it's kind of like yeah, that's a skill. That is a skill. Yeah. The thing is, I can talk to my audience while streaming and just do my driving. But if I start explaining what I'm doing driving wise and f focusing kind of double on it. Or once in doing it, and the other time in like explaining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I start to think too much about what I actually do. Yeah. And then this happens. Anyway, last ten minutes is up for you. Um. So. I, I think I need to. Um. Just relax a little bit and then try again. Um. I'll re I'll mm -hmm. review this video various times um, because I want to truly understand what it is that I need to be doing um, in certain corners, namely 13 and 12. Yes. Um, the other corners I, I, I kind of I kind of know, uh, especially turn 9 and 10. I, I think I understand what I'm doing wrong. It's just a question of, okay, I understand, now stop doing it. Um, yeah, yeah. The other the other corners are, are not too bad, so I want to focus on those first. Um, I am quite glad that the faster lap times are coming, like you mentioned at the beginning. So it means that whatever it is, it's sinking in in terms of how to yes. how to go around the track. So that's good. Hundred percent. So that's good. And this was the first time my optimal was in the forty fours. So I'm quite, quite happy with that. Your optimal is way into the forty fours. Actually, you did a forty four point eight, and your optimal is a forty four point five. Yes. Yes. So, so that is that is a huge difference. Um, so since there is still a couple of minutes left, I once again I once again go out and try to explain a couple more times i will not go as fast having said that it would not be surprising if i still improve the time anyway um i just want to quickly rehearse on a couple of things and give you another point of view on it mm -hmm. um so i'm just taking the last couple of minutes to try and get better in explaining and driving at the same time mm -hmm. this turn this turn two really make use of this of the space available try to straight line this turn two approach as much as possible it will help you keeping the rear in check and not like this will help on the tire wear it will help on the lap time it will help on everything literally that is really what you need to what you need to try to you have already stopped doing the the wing to the right kind of in the last 25 minutes mm -hmm. I mean so all you need to do now is make up for it and straight line that turn to mm -hmm. was there a question no i was going to say uh, yeah i'm trying really hard to not do it not do it yeah obviously for the race you go just as good as you can and as quickly as you can and if you do the wing to the right then that's absolutely fine but if you keep practicing try to avoid the wing mm -hmm. 
and you'll be you'll be all right. Turn 13, just easily trying to carry a bit more speed. You want to be slowest at the point when you hit the curb, not before the curb. So you're the slowest way before the apex, but you want to be the slowest when you are at that curb. Really, I like your turn one. Nothing, nothing really to argue on it. You really stay tight here. Don't do that wing to the left. Just go aim straight for that apex. The only thing you don't want to have to, uh, to to fight with is the track limit on the exit. That is the only thing that you need to avoid. Turn two, you can slightly touch that curb and gradually increase the power and open the steering towards the exit. I think your 5, 6, 7 is alright, all it takes here is the rhythm as we already spoken about, don't want to touch that curb too much on the exit. I think your turn 8 is good, just focus on putting down the power a bit earlier, so that you don't uh, be completely stuck on the inside. Turn 10, your approach I think is really reasonably well, just try to keep working on the consistency there. So once you have rewatched your lap, try to keep rep repeatedly doing what you've done there. Mm -hmm. Your turn 11 is also a lot better. You're not turning into early anymore. You're hitting the apex, you're carrying the speed. You can keep fine tuning that. And then this is the only thing where you really may want to work a little bit more. That you hit the lowest speed and then hit the throttle again when being on the apex and not before it. Mm -hmm. That's it really. Yep. Okay. Same for this final turn. You can slightly touch that curb and then just let the car go on the exit. What that car is obviously being tricky with is the power band, so you need to have it at a certain RPM range, kind of. Mm -hmm. For having a stable rear and yet a bit of power. Oh, you stay on the right here. Aim for that apex. And let's just let the car go as good as you can. You can even take that flat out, at least on yeah. the fresh tires. Yes, fresh tires, especially if you short shift quite quickly to third. Yes. Track limits. Careful with these. And then a better approach through five and six. Still taking a bit too quick. Late apex here on eight. And you can go early on the power. This is great. You already do this really well. Oh, this turn 10. Yep. Apparently you do turn 10 better than <laughs> I do it. Because I keep spinning. You're just pushing a yeah, bit hard. But... Yeah, because I'm trying to show you a little bit what is the maximum. So this is... And this is where I often get criticized like, oh, this coach is not able to drive or show how to drive because he's spinning and whatnot. But you know what? That's actually, that's actually fine because while trying to give you the best explanation, I'm going way maximum to the limit so that you can see at the most difference to your own driving what I'm doing different. Mm -hmm. um, I can always like step five or 10% back, not spin but then not push the car to the edge where you're like, okay, now I'm looking at his driving, but I don't see the mega difference. So what is it really that I'm doing wrong? So I'm going like a little bit over the edge mm -hmm. so that you, that you see what kind of technique or what kind of lines, what kind of speeds, what kind of inputs I'm, I'm putting into it. And then you'd be like, okay, yeah, if he, if he did not overdo it by three, four, five percent, he would have still done the same line, been, half a second quick or whatever so uh, i don't want to defend myself for spinning obviously while coaching of course this looks bad but at the same time if i don't go to the limits of the car to the limits of the track to my own ability limits i cannot really tell you about what to really improve on so mm -hmm. yeah that's the reasoning for that mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, I think that's it from from my side. If you have any further questions, then 
um, time for asking it. No, I don't think I don't think I have any any more questions. I guess now it's just reviewing the video and practice, 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 and then I will try to practice as much as I can here. And then Saturday, just before the race, I'm going to have at least two more stints at the venue, and then race on Sunday. Hopefully, I'll be ready so by then. I I would I would massively appreciate if you would have a comment later on on the video on the YouTube channel uh, and on on how it went and what what you think was the overall effect out of the two hours that we did mm -hmm. or you can also DM it to me here like yeah, whatever whatever you feel like but I would really like to see because you know you you said to me that at best you could reach a forty five at some point now you improve that by a second I think you improve the consistency a lot and I really would appreciate to to. To know what is the overall outcome for your race then that you do yeah so really interested in knowing yeah sure i'll, I'll gladly tell you especially if you do well <laughs> oh yeah for sure yeah okay all right bud thank you so much thank you very much michi have a good one you're welcome edson have a good one good luck for the race yes thank you very much bye 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 so and now it's out for you guys Put your thoughts down in the comments area below. Um, I did a small explanation on why I keep spinning on some coachings. Um, gloves off. What is your opinion on it? I know that a lot of people have given me shitstorm about it, so I'm very openly about it. I can understand their point of view, but here is my explanation as in why. Beside that, um, what do you think about those coaching? What do you think about the progress of Edson? For those of you that have seen episode one or the first coaching that we did around the, the circuit with this car and now his improvement, I'm completely mind blown. Of course, he has done some practice in it. Of course, he's done kind of some homework. But uh, from my point of view, not only in lap time, but also in the driving quality, that is a huge improvement. That is a huge development into the right direction. And this is why I'm really interested to see what is the actual impact for their endurance race that he's going to do with his teammate and um, generally speaking obviously i'm always interested in the impact of the coachings being done by me with my clients um but in this case of course um you you see a huge step you've seen the effort being put into it so i want to know from their race is like and i'm just trying to to do an example we have been i don't know 100 seconds down after two hours now we're only 60 seconds down or whatever what is the net outcome of this i'm really really interested and i hope you guys are interested too once again guys put your thoughts in the comments area below give the video a like uh, subscribe to the youtube channel if you appreciate our our coachings our streams our videos about our factor tune sim racing and make sure to come back for more stream guys have a good one thank you for watching and once again also thank you edson for for working with us and uh, yeah on to the next one guys see you everyone bye bye